<laughs> Hello, I'm here. Sorry, I got Hello. I got Hello. caught up writing. That's you good. Caught up. Uh, we're all getting caught up tonight. Uh, let's see. Let's hope not. We might uh, need to put up Fred a trigger confirmed. warning tonight. Ooh. Oh no, trigger warning. <laughs> Wait, for what? What the fuck is going to happen tonight? Did you see the bingo card for tonight? I did. That's wonderful. That's not canon. <laughs> Unless. Unless. What is, what is. Oh, Jesus Christ. I, I wrote. <laughs> what did fourth... area or more likely demon skunk draw? <laughs> <laughs> We're going to have a good time tonight. <laughs> Don't worry about it. What what kind of content warning? All? What is that? It's not. I know I say that before. <laughs> when I'm just saying like this is a game that has everything in it, but <laughs> content warnings. Yes. Okay. Let me open OBS. <laughs> Usually, it's supposed to reflect up. the thing that it's warning. <laughs> oh fuck! I'm still on my corporate VPN. Oh no! They're gonna know Oops. you're a furry. I, I mean, they definitely already do. I have furry art up on my walls in my Zoom meetings. It's fine. They know yeah. that I go to furry conventions. I'm not shy about it. I know. Um, One of the first conversations we had about your work was that you were in a Zoom meeting and then turned around and realized that your your gay calendar was up behind you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this poor person in chat. Am I the only straight person here? <laughs> yes, sweetie. <laughs> Usually, from my experience, when someone says, Am I the only straight person here? They're usually not. <laughs> mm -hmm. Just, just life it, experience. Maybe it has been a coincidence. On they just end, felt the the average shift, and it made, and it made it's like the it's like dramatically. It's, it's like, I, feel like, the, still, it's like feeling feel the ground like, give way beneath you. I still feel like this the law of like statistics and probability just states just no, just no. The sample probably. size is too big. Probably yes. not. Nico's a wolf, uh, right? Okay. Yeah. Canines are so ambiguous that it was, wasn't until I was writing down the tags on the fan art uploads that I was like, wait, is he a wolf, though? Some of that I, he did was I a, guess? A Mui? A Mui? I don't know how to say that. Uh, Sam, the Samoyed word Samoyed. thing? Samoyed? Samoyed? Oh, Samoyed. Yeah. yeah. Um, the cloud dog. American People Samoyed. keep calling Argos uh, a weasel. That breed didn't exist in 1904. <laughs> Well, According I to the really American ne Kennel Club, neither did since werewolves. we're time travelers and there's multiple dimensions, you haven't really figured into the probability of string theory. Actually. Yeah, back in 1904, uh, old dogs String theory like didn't exist until... Listen, we can make up lore for the sparkle dog. We can, we can fix anything. Choose you like a hamster. <laughs> I have been writing for like 36 hours straight, and then oh I slept gosh. for four hours, so I'm a little bit... Uh, not how, much, how long have you been writing gay? Man, bag has got a juicy butt. You blocked the original site. <laughs> yeah, I do. Beck is getting a lot of pornography, I have noticed. I'm that, happy for this. That left cheek slowly just kind of bubbling up a little bit as his leg is bent back. That's pretty good. I'll take it. Stat dump Butts are hard to truck. draw. But incredibly rewarding. All right. Uh, it's like, hey, draw cool. one curve so perfectly it evokes most of an anatomy of a person. <laughs> it's like, what the fuck? You've just explained gesture. It's fucked up. Drawing's fucked up. No one should do it. True. It would be very interesting to see how Sandals interacted with Beck. Oh, the Sandals Beck shot on sight. I feel yeah. like he would die. <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't. Like die. I don't think Sandals and Beck would get along. I know. I know. <laughs> it was. A, that's it why was I want a to see it. Child. That's why I want to see it. We would like to see it. <laughs> we would like okay. to see Sandals get shot. <laughs> so many people want to see that. The majority of this series is porn is for a zombie. Yeah. <laughs> that's a treat. Granted, I don't know breath. how many people have parsed that that Beck is dead. Yeah, I don't know. He always comes across as dead-ish. Dead, yeah. A, a dead-like dead substance. Dead. He's undead. That's not the same as dead. Yeah. 
he's yeah, not the opposite of dead. He's not decaying. His body like is sort of dead. yeah, in stasis, I guess. It can like technically va heal. Vampire, oh my god, Edward Cullen. He yeah. only has yeah. one cum. Got sparkles. And, va <laughs> and vampires are has, He only has one cum and he has to use it wisely. <laughs> <laughs> he, comes, he comes once and then he dies. <laughs> <laughs> That's Twilight Life Lore. Force. Uh, also, I don't know if anyone saw this meme get posted. Yes, the horses. I love that so much. That was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cooler than you. I gotta do that. I gotta do that to long horse. <laughs> oh, now you're pro long horse, huh? <laughs> no, I'm just not anti long horse. <laughs> I'm, I'm a, I'm a, a long long horse hard horse anti long horse. <laughs> yeah, if I had a petticoat anime. in this house. <laughs> Good. <laughs> if I knew how to animate, I'd do uh, the Akira slide with long horse. Oh no! It just, it just oh my keeps, god! It just keeps, it keeps going. It keeps just... going out of panel as you slide. Yeah, that's the not long okay. horse turns sideways, slides for three inches, and immediately topples over and rolls. Oh fuck that! <laughs> Hey everyone, this is Keith at a later date checking out the store because in the shuffle of a big multiplayer thing it's kind of hard to go in let's player mode and be like oh I will now read all of the tool tips aloud for the audience because we're all talking over each other and trying to do stuff and taking breaks and so on so I figured I'd go through as bonus content in the middle of this video and actually read through them all slash show them so you guys can actually tell what all the options were especially if they come back later. But here's the store, got the biscuit holder, the boot of invulnerability, the bullshit whip, can of beans, friendly rope, lucky worm, picture of toes, returning horseshoe, snake oil, sticky stuff, stuffy stick. I like that, That's the, the, the goofy reversed name there, sticky stuff and stuffy stick. The true enough brand, 20 gallon hat, and universal saddle. Half of these are very funny and half of these are upsetting. Let's get in there. <clears throat> so we got the lucky worm. This worm has the luck edge. You borrow this benefit when you eat the worm until it escapes. It's really very lucky. That is absurding. That absurding, upsetting, absurd and upsetting. Both of those words, yeah. So <laughs> definitely seems to imply that it's gonna worm its way through your digestive tract and find its way back out, and uh, you lose the luck edge. And also now the worm is back out of you, and that's a thing that's happening now. Returning horseshoe always comes back when thrown, so it's like a boomerang. It might have more creative uh, interpretations as well. Universal saddle. Any creature wearing this saddle can travel with the, the pace and steadiness of a trained steed while comfortably carrying a single rider of any size, no matter how awkward it looks. I just immediately imagine putting this on another party member and riding them. Like Lynn riding Argo or, or Argo riding Lynn would be very funny, or, or any, any other option combination. Uh, Friendly rope. This rope can be commanded to tie itself with a successful persuasion check. It's a voice commanded rope. Rope. A picture of toes. This crude depiction of toes is scrawled upon a discarded issue of the Mind's Eye tabloid. The goblins are at risk of developing fungible tokens. <sighs> Freaking NFT jokes. It's still alive and with us. Biscuit holster. This pistol holster always has fresh biscuits inside. Always. Stuffy stick. Anyone poked with this stick suffers the frustrating congestion of a head cold. The bullshit whip. This whip grants you a free reroll on notice checks to spot lies against creatures within reach of it when held in your hand. If if you succeed on a, on a such a check, it automatically lashes out and attacks them. Uh, so you... So Nico grabbed a uh, weapon that whips people to get the truth out of them. Boot of invulnerability. While worn, your foot cannot suffer harm. That's going to be interesting, because that feels like there's a lot of power you can get from anything being invulnerable in some way in certain contexts. Like, jam it in this machine. Oh, well, the machine's broken. Can of beans. Magic? True enough brand. When heated and used to brand a creature while asking it a question, the brand will form a one word answer to that question if the target knows the answer, and it can be summarized in one word. So that's upsetting in its own way. Two different interrogation items. One of them's even more violent than the other one. It's, I, if I'm reading it right, I'm, I believe this means that like, you brand someone while asking the question and then the answer is branded onto them, which is a lot. 
Snake oil, freshly milked. 20 gallon hat. This impressively large hat can be, can be commanded to dispense 20 gallons of water by anyone touching it whenever they say the word water. Sticky stuff. This jar is filled with the stickiest goo ever seen by goblin kind. Oh, whoa. I don't know if Nico would want to torture Gurgle, but he wants to know things. Hmm. Hmm. If you haven't already opened up the 3D model of the table, you guys got to see the worm uh, on the table. It's incredible. Yeah. The weird. It's, al it's almost like there's a lying liar in our midst, and there's many items to make them uh, reveal their lies. So <laughs> suspicious. Huh. I wonder what the message is here from the DM. <laughs> <laughs> What is this can of beans? It just says magic? Yeah. <laughs> it's a possibly magic can of beans. Does anyone want to call dibs on anything? <laughs> I kind of want the bullshit whip, but if someone really wants it, I will. Why is the snake have oil it. two toes? The boot of yeah, invulnerability uh, I, I makes that. just that just, foot just invulnerable. <laughs> it's fresh. I think that's just like a get creative with it kind of thing. Yes, that seems like the, the item that breaks the campaign somehow. <laughs> <laughs> this foot, this foot is invulnerable, therefore I win. Somehow. Yeah, the boot of invulnerability seems fist. like it's going to be extremely useful at some point. Yeah, we I should we should probably get the boot. Like but how yeah. is how is one foot gonna being being completely invulnerable somehow gonna break the campaign? Because it will. I think it will, especially if there's a goblin boss. I don't think I want anything. <laughs> I think I, I, think I, want, this, I, I don't want to look at this stuff. St sticky oh. stuff. Oh, it's, so, it's so good, though. The but, worm like, is so upsetting. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's so great. It's so great. This worm has the luck edge. You borrow this benefit when you eat the worm until it escapes. It's been really lucky. I think the only thing I don't really care about is the returning horseshoe. Because, uh -huh. like, that's what cool, but... Uh, eight hours later, the what worm's just luck? running down your leg. <laughs> No. <laughs> I'm really excited about the bullshit whip and this can of beans. This can of beans just seems so interesting to me. It just seems like mean. a metaphor. That shit belongs to Stilton. We own claim to that. <laughs> the picture of Toes says that the goblins are at risk of developing fungible tokens. It's either going to be magic for real or it's just going to be like literal just cans and a bean and then some yep. goblins going to be like, oh, I love beans. Do you have beans? Someone from town needs to claim that those belong to Stilton and that <laughs> that one of these fuckers stole it from them. I still have the badge. Hmm. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh my uh, god, how do you make them worse? <laughs> <laughs> I practiced. Which one was Bup Plug? Bup Plug. Oh, Bup Plug was the, the uh, little stripey one. Okay, that one's cute. The pear shape. That one's that one's very yeah. cute until you said its name. Yeah. Well, we're gonna start. We're gonna start calling him Blug for short. And the uh, Blug, Blug Fingus, yeah. Darno. Blug. <laughs> His name's Blug. Yeah. I mean, if fingers? one of you wants to name him, you could oh, change my, his name. Oh, oh, oh my God. God. But oh, you know what God. that means potentially. <laughs> it's a little one, two, three, responsibility it. to name Bub Plug. <laughs> No, I think it's a, he's, it's a good name. It's a good family name. He's, he's bound yeah. to stick with you. <laughs> he walks funny. <laughs> Shut up. This this was w well. <laughs> this was a, a very well needed like uh, break session where we get to have fun and, and role play the whole time and don't need to worry about things. But call you. This motherfucker, I am yeah. so pissed about the yeah. fatigue. I'm yeah. so yeah. every opportunity. Every opportunity. I failed every chance to fucking save that. We only have one of them. I thought the coffee was gonna I be good. Too. Yeah. I thought the coffee was gonna do it and I just fucked it up. Oh I'm so mad. It is I what was, it is. Hey, I was for worth, it'll be really why fun you wanted coffee to... so much. <laughs> I'm I'm very looking forward to the next session where we fight the final boss of the campaign and Beck is rolling a negative two on every fucking roll. Our strongest party dead. member is rolling a negative two on everything. I don't got ah! a negative two. It's fine. We've got checkups dynamite. Uh, 
so exhausting. Uh, that was a fun session. I got to have a few character moments, which I liked. Those are that great. Was, you guys that did was, amazing. That session was dense. That was so fucking fun. Yeah, Holy that was shit. good. The fan artist Ooh, got, got so much to work with today. Yeah. I was like, how the fuck are we going to have it ready for the last session in one day? And I'm like, oh, okay. Ah, that's how. <laughs> I see. <laughs> we're, <laughs> at the, we're at the spiral. Uh-huh. Toaster, did Beck and I cross streams? I think that's the most important question. <laughs> I were mean, were y'all sword the, fighting out there? Were they like, what's going on? against the wind? <laughs> that really depends on how how playful Conrad is. I think. Tio. I think. I mean, Beck is <laughs> Beck is pissing off the side of a train that's moving, presumably. <laughs> Look, Beck's a real degree. straight shooter. But at the same time, uh, I don't, I don't know. Maybe, maybe P physics work differently in the dream. Maybe, maybe this is, maybe this is the world where all furry fan art exists, where physics aren't real, and and you can have a perfect arc off the side of a perfect off the side of a moving flow. train. We're gonna have to uh, resolve this love triangle, though. It's <laughs> it's funny. Because Somewhere, literally every single scene that happened, chat was like, "Are they?" Are they flirting between every pair of characters? <laughs> yeah, every single time. That was so much fun with with obviously Lynn and uh, Lynn and Argo. The like clear romantic tension between them is really fun, and the the will they won't would they of it. I mean, it's it's kind of interesting because Lynn will and they Argo have they already. <laughs> have yeah. They? Well, I mean, I think it's yeah, clear at this point, at least to me, that they have. But I think I think the fun thing about this relationship is like. I think a lot of stories like this are prone to um, wanting to chase the romance, but it feels like in this case, the romance is over. Like it's already happened and now it's a thing we need to move beyond. And that's like, that's so interesting. That's like genuinely one of the most interesting things you can do with, with two player characters who might have a history is because... It's so you can look anywhere in any fiction and see romance between characters, maybe not gay characters, but just characters in general. And it's much rarer to see people come to the conclusion that they maybe aren't good for each other, but still need to work together. And that's like really satisfying, at least to me as like a third party viewer. Yeah, I don't know if that's entirely the dynamic. No, no, it yes. Is, it's uh, a question at this point of yes, will they continue or yes. will they move past it? It's not will they, won't they, it's like, what is it? Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. But, but I mean, is, is, this, is this just a regret to move on from or not? Yeah. I got a and question. I'm, I got a retro spring question four minutes ago that's not a question. It just says, wow, Argo's a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's Cassidy's funny. a piece of shit. Uh, <laughs> He's when, when chat was coming up with Argo Lynn's shipping name, and I'm, and I'm like, I'm about to change. I'm literally about to reveal his real name in a few minutes. So this is <laughs> a lot of wasted effort. That's good. But we're gonna, wait, update, wait. We're gonna update the. <laughs> yeah, we'll need to update the portrait. cards. Yep, Cass. I can do that. But it's it's interesting, I think, because ultimately, even if Lynn and Cass now get together or they, they become a thing, or if they if they or won't they, regardless of that question, they still have gone through this phase of like, what the fuck does this even mean for both of them? Like, who, like what is this? And that's so rare. I think we're so blessed to have that in this party dynamic. It's, it's such an interesting and nuanced thing. I think one of my, one of my favorite kinds of romance is the romance of a missed connection. Like that idea of like two people ephemerally touching for the very brief period that they are connected, but then that fades like all things. And I think there's a lot of beauty in that. And it's it's interesting to see Lynn and, and Cass's connection on that front because there's still the chance that it could continue and that things could evolve from here. But they are on the precipice of that loss. And it's very rare to see fiction touch that because it's so melancholy and so nuanced that it's hard to write in that space. So it's very cool to see us play with that. Yeah, I think a big part of this it wasn't necessarily a misconnection, but rather a forced connection now because... Yeah. yeah. Uh, I okay. guess... Earmuff they, spoilers. It was supposed <laughs> to be just a one and done thing, and then it wasn't. Yeah. 
Yeah, Definitely. It's, a, it's a it's a it was a one off thing where that was selfish and not a connection, and then they were trapped yep. here forever with each other. Yeah, because it's the night that everything went down, and Argo sees himself as as having caused Lynn to be in this story in the first place. Yep. I still I still think that there is a degree of that 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 is, you know, like two trains passing in the night like that, that kind of thing. Trains of like, collided. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. No, but that's it is like derailed. the disaster that comes from this is so fan is so, two boy so howdy interesting. <laughs> so there, there's a lot to that, that dynamic that I really like. And then obviously we had like the Nicodemus and the Conrad or not the Conrad, the chance uh, scene. I keep saying yeah, Conrad, that was I mean really chance. fun. He keeps that was so Conrad. cool. <laughs> Like genuinely really like so neat. That was good. They had more neither. parallels to tap on than I expected. I really liked that that chance and Nicodemus scene just because there's I feel like there's so much between them that is unsaid in the campaign. I don't mean specifically like their dynamic, but like chance is a character that we have seen primarily through his actions, not his words. And Nicodemus is a character who chimes in when the situation is like when, when it like strategically calls for it right is like these are two characters that were very restrained in comparison to the situation they're not exactly as wild as like the rest of the, like the criminals or or lynn um so it was really interesting to see them like open up to the rest of the the game yeah. so to speak it's kind of why i was surprised that like we were going to have I mean, I understand like logistics is why we're gonna run out of games, but I was kind of hoping to get more like chances for these characters to breathe a little bit because like I yep. still kind of like I I didn't even get to talk to Wolfram really, yeah, um, mm -hmm. and like I kind of wanted to like have this more breathing room with Chance and some breathing room with Argo, but like we're kind of just like going, plot plot yeah. plot plot, plot that, uh, yeah, it's hard, it's re know. it's really hard to fit in every single moment you know well mm -hmm. if y'all can manage to save southpaw there will be plenty of breeding room with wolf from you just said breeding room <laughs> yeah he did uh, <laughs> i think yeah. you know i think i think it's interesting though right like we have all of these these pieces built up and there's there's over the course of the campaign all of these plot threads get dropped right is like this idea of like literally with chance like he says that luck must exist but his is garbage and like that's fascinating. That's like a really interesting perspective to hold against a character like Nick Can you Demas, relate to who's that? very faithful. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's like obviously there's Beck, who's like I believe that divinity exists, but divinity is is malicious and bad. And then you have like the the meeting of chance that is Argo and Lynn, and like Conrad and the fact that he killed someone entirely by mistake, like. All of these synchronicities happen that add weight to everything and like tie all of our characters' individual moments together, even when they're not in scenes together. And mm -hmm. I think that is kind of what defines and that that's what defines these sort of anthology series that we do. But also it it does so much character work for us. Like I would love more scenes with Nicodemus and I would love more scenes with Chance where we get to just like I get to shoot the shit with Marty. I love Marty. Marty is great. He's so much fun to play these games with. But sometimes those scenes can't happen because we're busy trying to make other things happen. So I think it's so beautiful that like the game itself is giving us narrative parallels between our characters, if that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, completely unplanned, but you start to you start to see how they're tied together and how how they have these commonalities that you didn't expect. Beck yeah. and Chance just like kicking their feet and giggling about magic. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, very much. I mean, and and Madoska, I mean, Madoska is a fun connection between the two of us because it's this goofy element that exists in Beck's story. And like the chat was like going wild when Beck was on the phone with Madoska, right? Like this idea of this like grizzled baddie who's like, Grandma, you shouldn't fall for the, the Nigerian prince scams. I told you not to put your credit card on the computer like that. <laughs> that is is fine. But like there's like a lot there then when you turn that on its head and you look at like. Beck is subservient to this person, and for whatever reason, whether it be magical or otherwise, suddenly Chance is in that situation too, and Beck needs to look at him 
like a literal sibling. Like, it doesn't matter how Beck feels about Chance or their ideological differences. They both share this connection, and now they need to they need to be responsible for it. And that's like a really interesting forced connection between the characters. And it's something that I think the gameplay really organically fosters, which is really enjoyable. Hell yeah. I know it's been wild. The gameplay <laughs> organically fosters and Ka subtly pieces together without yes. us paying attention. Yes. Fully. Ka putting a magic shabara rope on the table. Hmm, <laughs> I love was... dumb magic items. I like them a lot. <laughs> it's fun. I mean, and, and of course we have our fun, right? Like, I mean, we're a bunch of furries. We we understand our community. We know our audience. So like it is it is fun for me to to be like Conrad says, I wish I pissed on his grave. And then, you know, Beck swings <laughs> dick and then pees all off the side of the train. Like, that's fun. Like, that's goofy. No, I'll, I'll hop right in with you. <laughs> it's it's silly. But then, like, it's also fun to see Just chat in with the bros. Yeah, it's it's yeah. fun to see chat immediately be like, this is the Final Fantasy nine Zidane and and Vivi peeing off the side of Conda PD scene. And I'm like, yeah, it is. Did they we're do in, that? Yeah, we're in Madame oh. Sari. Like, that's what that's what's happening right now. We're having the bro talk and we're peeing off the side of the train together. Like this is art, actually. Yeah, it's art, actually. <laughs> we're doing a thing. But also draw that scene, please, for me, <laughs> Toaster, specifically. Uh, it's it's just good stuff. Like, it's fun. And it's so cool to see to see how much this stuff tease off itself and i think you know right when we started to do these um when we started to do these flashbacks i immediately messaged con i was like do conrad and i last because one of the reasons why i wanted to go last was because i knew beck's response to seeing this thing would be very different than everyone else and and argo responded with fear and chance and nicodemus responded like this was like a ghost from their past coming to us but this is Beck's fucking life. This is all he's been thinking about for 20 years. Oh, so and you knew this was coming. <laughs> it's less that I knew this was coming and more that I predicted it was coming, which are two different things. Sandals <laughs> would disagree, but... You know, uh, I, I kind of wow, knew it was coming too, because we knew we were going to the land of despair, and I was like, oh, this is where Kyle's going to throw our backs. Uh, this is yes. the fun, it's, happy um, beach episode land. Yes. I kind of knew too. I didn't bother re-rolling, because it was just like, fuck it, because I kind of had a moment of like... I knew the emotion that Conrad would experience if he didn't pass the role is that he wouldn't be afraid of what he saw. It would just make him angry. Yeah, um, I think that's like that's how it would rattle. He he wouldn't be able to keep his cool, but uh, you're going to see like he's not afraid of that dude anymore. He's sort of gotten over that. He's just pissed. Yeah. And I mean, and that, that same thing goes <laughs> more than one way. <laughs> I mean, that that goes for Beck, too, where I, you know, I rolled to pass that spirit check and I tried really hard to pass it. But I knew that if Beck failed it, um, his. His reaction would not be one of like anger or like you know like profound like this is the moment where beck breaks and he proves to everyone that he has a golden core at the heart Ooh. of it all it was literally beck is like i am staring my death in the face and it is time for the grim reaper to come calling like that is what he saw in this and that is what he reacted to so it's this it's this very interesting moment of like I had a lot of fun playing a character who, for lack of a better word, like has a true death wish, right? And like, I think at this point where this was the penultimate session of the campaign, our last sort of hurrah before we had to really boil down and like, I'm just going to talk about the game. Like, I don't know if I see a way for Beck to get out of this. And I don't know if I even want there for, be a, uh, for, for there to be a way for Beck to get out of this. Beck giving reasons for all of the things that he does is not a justification for those things. It's an explanation. And I think it's very hard for me to see a world where we get to Edward Kettle. And just to put a, an example out there, like, let's say, let's say Kettle is like, hey, I'm here and I am, you know, I, I am the way I am for a reason. And now everyone is on my side. Beck put the revolver away i don't think beck could like beck was being very sincere when he spoke to conrad when he said like there's going to be a time when i think you will be the end of me and i have to trust you to put me down because i can't stop myself 
it's and that romantic that connects to what Argo was saying, which is this idea of like, what is the difference between Beck, who is hunted by this hunger that constantly plagues him, and these creatures here that are like greedy for more and that are that are eating and consuming and taking over all of these places in the dream beck is that monster he's just trying to apply himself and the second that that loses perspective like beck doesn't want to become that but he knows he inevitably will and i i'm looking forward to seeing how that collapses because i think there's a lot of potential there for something really meaningful <laughs> Um, that a lot of campaigns wouldn't go to. And I recently had a conversation with someone about the idea of like, how do you deal with player death and how do you deal with the end of things? And with Beck, you know, he could have died this session. And I, I really feel like he could have died session one. He could have exactly. <laughs> and like that in a way is meaningful in itself, right? Because his story is about this quest and this hunger and whenever he dies, it's like a bullet point. It's like a period on that statement of like, you hunger for something, but eventually you starve. And I think and there's a lot of things about this world that I want to see, like, because there's a very, there's, there's constant hints of a very rich, very interesting, sprawling world that we're getting little glimpses of. Because I hear about the city of witches, and I'm like, that's fucking rad. I want to meet more witches. And I hear about, like, the realm of fear, and I'm like, oh, my God, what would that look like? And then, mm -hmm. you know, like, we skip past it. And then I hear about um, Edward Kettle, and I, like, I, when you told your backstory with Beck, I'm like, that's such a fucking important character that I need that to be here. Like, yeah, <laughs> like, like, I think there's just, like, it, it feels like a tease almost, like, yeah, the, you know, it's cool because I'm like, cool I definitely whole like last time we had Miss, we had Miss Potatoes, which was a character that was up to something in like Half Life G Man sort of ways, like had those vibes from a, from the outside, and then we never got the answers from that because it's not where the characters were going. Subscribe like, to our Patreon yeah, yeah. to play the build of the Cape Escape Development Hell that yeah, I am writing right now. Going to have a lot more about those characters. I'm not actually plugging that, but also do it anyway. I mean, you are <laughs> get more context it. with that means. too. But the uh, uh, at, speaking as somebody who's been playing tabletop, not that religiously, but more than a decent amount of people at least here on and off for the last like half of my life or something. I never finished a single goddamn campaign until Cape Escape. It's impossible to finish a campaign. Oh my god, it's totally tabletop. It's so it brutal. It is so possible. It's, it's great. Possible. Good for you. <laughs> you know what I find helps me as like a creator is like you 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 think that like doing like one creative thing and then moving on to other sort of other activities throughout the week would help you creative process, but I found that working on multiple projects at a time and like this isn't really like a project per se, but like like basically it's a project. Yeah. Multiple creative um, pursuits. Um, if you do multiple things, it really helps with burnout. Because, yeah. Oh my God, yes. Because if you're tired of one thing, then you can jump to the other thing. And then once you go back to the thing, the other thing that you're working on, then it's a lot more refreshing. I mean, I'm, I'm working on like four creative projects at a time, like always. Yeah. Um, so being able to move between that many um, is actually less frustrating yes. than just working on one thing. And yeah. I don't think people understand that because when I tell them like I'm working on four things, they're like, oh my God, how can you? Don't you feel dead? And I'm like, well, if you consider this like the, the thing that I do, like, the, the job that I do essentially because I do make money from my creative endeavors. I mean, not from this, obviously, but like from yeah. the other three things. Um, you you can't really say that like, oh, I'm not feeling baking muffins today at the bakery, right? Or I don't feel making a pizza or I don't feel doing the tax forms, right? It's a job. Um, yeah. So you need to find ways to enjoy it. And I found that just going between things not only helps you enjoy it more but also 
actually adds to your other projects because you get exposed to new influences, new people, new voices, new ideas, and it helps you avoid getting too stale, I think, or too stagnant. Yeah. Di directly um, relevant to what we're doing right now. Literally just two nights ago, I was working on the script for my next video. And I was just like, fuck this. And you know, I reached a point where I was done and I just sat down and wrote uh, Conrad's backstory, which is oh, now yeah. on the Patreon in one sitting. And I was just like, it was like such a yeah. sigh of relief. And then when I got back to the script today, uh, I was just like, hell yeah. I was like, like before I was just kind of like not feeling it, but now I'm like basically done with it. So. Mm hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Being able to split projects up is is huge. Yeah. I'm gonna be very sad when Dead Boss <laughs> ends, and I'm gonna no issue I'm gonna issue a preemptive apology for whatever national tragedy befalls us when I go a week without playing tabletop. Like I'm very <laughs> sorry in advance for whatever. TS the hell into happens. the Joker for real. Yeah, for real. Uh, I am gonna lose my fucking mind. Uh, so send help. This is a cry for help. I'm asking for uh, help. You know, you know what? Same for me too. Because these Wednesdays, like, uh, this is also like a good socialization thing for me. Yeah. So yeah. like, when this is gone, I'm going to be like sad. I, I will plan my week around this. Like, fully, fully, <laughs> truly. The thing that that uh, I think makes it. Uh, easier for me like th having done Cape Escape first and then and having a great time with that and then also having a great time with this I feel like I'm not as heartbroken or worried about this ending and obviously I'm not gonna even remotely vaguely hint at what we were talking about in the discord publicly now yeah uh, but just some of the pitches that were coming up or things that we might do later on I was just like so on board with literally all of them yeah, yeah. um so i have that in the back of my head being like yeah like this yeah. is just a cool thing we're doing I and i'm super like into anthologies it. it's a lot of execution right now right my favorite show like, was doctor who for a decade we oh i feel yeah. like a lot of us know what we want to do with our characters and now it's it's truly boils down to like how do we stick the landing and that's beautiful and i love that if you think about it, the real toes were the friends we made along the way. It's one of my true. favorite one of my favorite trends in television was when True Detective and Fargo made a new show every season. <laughs> Fuck yes. Man. Yeah, they, Fargo. they, they yes. ended Fargo. Fargo had a like finite ending. And then the, they made the best season of television ever made as a result of that. Season two of Fargo is so good. It's so, Fargo is yet. such a good show. I haven't, Fargo is I haven't so seen good. any I haven't seen Fargo one very yet. good. Fargo two, seen Fargo two. Watch Fargo old Fargo. two. I think my three. favorite I think single the, standalone season three? of television ever. I feel ever like made. I watched the three. The, the there movie are is one five. of my favorite movies, but oh, God, yeah, I've not seen the yet. <laughs> Every yeah, so single season of Fargo, Fargo is good. Uh, full Noted. disclosure, uh, Taslin Beck and a lot of the like m gang and mafia politics that I've written into his backstory are very explicitly inspired by the Fargo Fargo TV show. Yeah, it's all that very, said, very good. What are we going to play Fiasco? <laughs> I'm the, that's not down the Coen for Brothers it. inspired one. Yeah, it's a collaborative storytelling yeah. game based let's, on Fargo. Let's write. Interesting. Let's write a play set. That's the exciting thing about this. short seasons is you get to keep doing new things. Yeah. We'll pop out and, uh, tabletop and simulator like, and play Dread with a Jenga tower. Yeah. And like, oh, like every actually, reality TV like, show, the 10th season will bring back old characters. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> While I have everyone, I'm going to promote my second channel, which is technically live, but has no content yet. If you search up late with Toaster on YouTube, you can follow my video reviews channel, which will have a video review posted in the next month. I promise um, I'm working I'm on a huge, probably four hour long, if I had to guess, if I'm estimating it right now, uh, video review of the Panzer Dragoon series. Uh, I'm going to try to make reviews of games I stream. So if you like things like Grimbeard and Dungeon Chill and Mandalore Gaming, you should follow me because I'm trying to do stuff like that. Uh, so once oh, again, yeah. the, the URL is up late with toaster, youtube.com slash at up late with toaster. And you can follow that uh, for when this comes out, which will be hopefully soon. I wrote 4000 words today uh, of that <laughs> review, and I'm maybe a third of the way done we'll see very That's, exciting oh god i'm sorry blur <laughs> i write fast it's okay it's so it's fine it's a good thing you said the exact URL is not searchable <laughs> i usually write I, I three thousand 
on a good day. Right Jesus fast, Christ, you ass, people. Piss off trains. Damn straight. I'm your, I'm your I, tenth subscriber. Yes. Yes. I'm, ha I'm having a good day if I write a positive number of words instead of negative words. <laughs> Actually, like, when I'm writing nonfiction, I can crank out 10,000 a day. Uh, it, yeah, like, it, de it depends on what I'm writing about. Like, I, I, I was an English major, so... Like, yeah, that was school... Like, I, I'm used to writing like, hey, you need a 25 page paper done every week for th two years yeah. straight. Like exactly. that is what I am used to. So I will pump out words same. if same. I have to. And I always got A's. Yeah, so, same. Okay. I would drop out of college in response to having to do something like that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that is not a joke. <laughs> but yeah. what, what, what made it easy for me is like one of my teachers said, when you're writing a paper, just read it like a conversation and then you're having yep. the conversation with yourself and then it's just get it. Trust your, get, trust yourself and your arguments and it will just, happen. yeah, it just, it, yeah. But like when I'm writing fiction, the prose needs to sound good. Yes. And, mm -hmm. and, that's not the case for well, nonfiction. Fiction is fucking hard. It's so difficult. The 16 uh, page backstory is harder than the 45 page script I have written for this goddamn Panzer Dragon review so I far. I agree with that. I agree yeah. with that. Yeah. Um, Toaster, you have fans. Yeah. Like a I third have... of the people watching already subscribed. <laughs> like immediately. Thank you, everyone. That's like, that, is like a, to 41. That, is, that is a click through rate. <laughs> you I, gotta, all... I gotta go for real. I always knew that I always knew that Lynn was a cast man. <laughs> <laughs>